In this lesson, we're going to learn a technique for softening edges by using the chamfer tool. All right, so we've built our dumpster, and we've got all of the details that we want in the main portion of the dumpster. But now uh, we have the problem of having too sharp of edges. And these sharp edges can really break the realism of your object. And so you want to soften those enough to where uh, it makes the object readable and we could actually see uh, the corners and things like that. So to get started with this, we're going to go ahead and go to edge mode. And the way that I like to do this is I like to select loops to go ahead and soften. So looking at this, um, if I come in here and select all of these edges, okay, right along um, the corner here, uh, we can come in and soften this. However, looking at the corners, it stops right here, and it doesn't continue all the way through. So here, we'll have to come in and start to prepare or, re or modify some of these edges to get them to move into loops. So to get started with this, I'm going to show you how to use the target weld tool to readjust some of this topology and get rid of some of this. So let's go to vertex mode by hitting 1 on the keyboard and let's right click and go to target weld. I'm going to left click on this vertex and you'll see that once I do that it gives me this dotted line and this is what I like to call the rubber band and whenever you see something like this it's asking you to pick another object and what's happening here is the first vertex that we've picked is ready to move to the next vertex that you pick and then merge with it so if I left click on here, you'll see that it's moved to that vertex and then also merged into one vertex. So we've successfully welded those two together. Let's go ahead and do the same thing across the top here. Let's go from here to here and then also along the bottom again. Okay, now we'll have to do that on all of the corners, uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll wait for that. So let's go to edge mode again, and then let's double click on this loop, and you'll see that it goes all the way through, okay, up to this point, and it goes all the way down inside. Now, if I hit chamfer on this, what this is going to do, let me go to my chamfer tool, is if I hit my settings, it's going to split that into two edges. Okay, now this is really great for creating soft edges. I could go ahead and I can adjust it, the amount of chamfer, so how much space we have in between the two edges and then I can also adjust how many edges that it actually splits into so right now it's split into two if I want one more segment I can add that in there it makes it really round there now if I want I can go ahead and pinch those a little bit closer to make that edge really tight now the issue that you have with doing this is it creates ingons so if you look here across the bottom, this polygon has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And that could be an issue. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to figure out a way to make those quads again, or four-sided polygons. Now, whenever you have ingons, it's easily fixed if your polygons are evenly numbered. So if I were to take this down to one, I now have a five-sided polygon and that's going to be a little difficult to fix uh, as it would have to have one triangle and then one quad. So I'm going to bump that up there back to six. It's going to give me a nice soft edge. I like the way that's looking. Um, we might tighten it up just a little bit more okay, just to make that a little bit harder on that corner. And then we'll hit OK. So now how do we fix these corners? How do I fix that? Well if I go to vertex mode what I could do is I could actually cut from this vertex down to this vertex to create a segment and that would essentially split this six-sided polygon into two quads. Okay. Now I could also select those two vertices and just simply hit connect and it will create a segment between the two and now I've created two quads. Now they are a little irregular but I don't plan on taking this uh, dumpster into something like ZBrush or something like that. So I don't really have to worry about that topology um, giving me any unexpected results. Alright, so now that we've finished that, let's go ahead and do the same thing on the inside. So let's select that vertex that's in the middle of that curve 
and then this one on the corner and hit connect. Let's do the same thing all the way around. So we have to come in and we have to target weld those corners. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So go to vertex mode. You can do that by hitting one on the keyboard and then we're going to right click and go to target weld. Let's get these on the bottom and then these on the top. Okay, so you're kind of getting an idea of how we can also optimize our topology. Okay, and normally you don't want to do any of this optimization unless it's absolutely needed or you're finished at the very end and you have all of your major details, at least in that specific area. Okay, so so far we are learning all pretty much all of the tools that you would see while using the box modeling method. And so uh, we're just going to continue on here and we only have a few more tools to go um, until we're finished uh, with this dumpster. We're getting very close and I hope that you've gotten some great insight on how to use these different tools and the different situations of doing so. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on all of these loops. I'm going to hold down control and select that loop as well and just hit chamfer settings and then hit OK. So that way we have the same size there. And then I'll come in, go to vertex mode, and just select those vertices and hit connect. Okay. So let's make sure that we do that on the inside and then also along the bottom. Okay. Now another reason that I'm going ahead and using or creating this detail in here um, is because um, it's not really going to be seen. It's on the bottom of the dumpster itself on the inside as well as on the outside and so it's in an inconspicuous area. So it's okay to make some irregular polygons like this. Normally whenever we create polygons we want them to be uh, nice and square not elongated like this. Um, this right here would considered would be considered as a T polygon because it has a straight line okay here on this edge and then the edge directly across from it is pretty much the same angle it's off just a little bit and then it has a edge that comes into it creating that T and polygons like that um, are kind of wasteful now in this particular case we do have a subtle change and so we can get away with it. But that's just a couple of things just to keep in mind. Alright so finally we have our last segment here and we've rounded out the corners of our dumpster. Let's select it and hit Z so that way we can focus in on that object. And we've rounded out the corners of the dumpster. Now the final thing that we need to do is go ahead and round out these corners as well and we can do that by using chamfer again. Now we can make that a little bit smaller. Now on a continuous loop like this we don't really have to worry about coming in and uh, checking for um, n-gons because it was a continuous loop all the way around. It didn't stop at one single point like it did at the corners. So usually with loops chamfer works really really well. Uh, let's double click here on these corners. So I'm going to hold down control and let's get the other side as well. And hold control and double click on those and then let's use chamfer here. I'm going to take that amount up just a little bit just to make that a little more readable and then hit OK. Now what I mean by making it a little more readable is making that curve a little larger so we can see it from further distances. Once you start getting really far away that detail may not actually be needed. Okay? But um, making it a little bit larger makes it readable from further distances. Okay, so we have the top there. We also have the bottom of our dumpster. And we may want to use chamfer on this as well. However, it's going to be sitting right um, along the ground um, unless we were to put the wheels on, in which we do have plans of going ahead and doing so. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to double click on the edges all the way around. And as you can see, it's not a continuous loop. Whenever we double click that, 
and we can already see that this is going to give us a few issues whenever we chamfer this edge and so we know that we're going to have to do a little bit of target welding and fixing of that topology whenever we use chamfer so let's go ahead and let's try it out let's make sure that we get all of those edges all the way around the bottom and we'll use chamfer now um, now that I think about this, if we were to use chamfer, um, that would be okay. We could go ahead and get it fixed. But there's one other method that we could use. Um, it's this, almost the same thing as chamfer. Uh, what we could do is we could use that ring and connect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode right here, and I'm going to select the ring. So I'm going to hold down shift and select the next edge in line. And you'll notice here that it's cutting straight across. I'm going to hold down Alt and deselect those edges on the bevel. And instead, I'm going to select this edge along the bottom. Okay, let's do the same thing across the front. Okay, so hold down Alt, deselect those, and then hold down Control and select those edges. And then let's use Connect. Now, whenever we connect that, let's do just one segment and take our slide down and let's get it pretty close to the bottom okay now we could also um, if we wanted to use slice plane now you can see here that this edge is not straight in line with the other so um, it's following the contour of that topology and so here's where we have a disadvantage with using connect so it may have been easier to use slice plane however if you use this tool all is not lost Okay, because what you can do is you can go ahead and hit OK and then just take this edge right here in the middle because it's the only one that's really off and then also the one on the back side and let's just move it straight up. Now remember if we move it straight up without constraints turned on it's going to change this topology right here and it's going to start to make things a little um, odd looking. So let's go ahead and take our constraints, set that to edge and then pull that up in our Z. Now you'll see here that that is giving us a little bit of an issue. It's trying to go up into that segment and not necessarily this one that we want. So I'm going to pull that up here in the X and Y. Now looking at this side, it's gone completely opposite. So what we would have to do in this case is we would have to go to vertex mode and we would come in and we would select this vertex here and then we would go to the other side and select this one. Then what we'll do is we'll raise that up um, in our Z and X or Y direction and try to get that straight line across there. And then we'll come here and along the back side, the opposite side, we'll go ahead and we'll move these vertices up. Let's make sure that we have that one deselected over there too. And now we'll move that vertice, set of vertices up in the Z and Y. And there we go. So now what I can do is if I go to my front view, I can select this row of vertices right across the bottom. Okay. And then I could grab my scale tool and scale those in. Now remember, you want to turn off the constraints. and you want to pull those in okay on the X and Y now let's do just a little bit on the Y I don't want to do a lot okay and then we'll do a little bit on the X we want just a tiny tiny amount on that just to bevel those edges okay make that a little softer and there we go okay so now we have the bottom edge and we've scaled that in, we've softened uh, that up, and everything is looking good. Now the only issue that we have now is we have this triangle. So we know that we can right click and target weld this vertex into the corner and we'll get our quads back. Okay. So now that we have learned a couple of different ways on how to soften edges, uh, some we can go ahead and use just 
a simple tool like chamfer and get the soft edges very quickly. Um, and sometimes we'll need to do a little bit of manual work while still using that tool. But then we may also need to uh, come in and soften those edges manually using um, just a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, just by coming in and adding in segments and pushing and pulling those vertices as needed. Every situation is going to be different. And so um, everything is going to present its own set of challenges. It's just a matter of being able to see the tool and thinking about a way of using it. And you may have to use it differently uh, than originally intended. All right, so now that we've softened the edges um, of our dumpster, now we're ready to come in and start building out the rest of the details. And in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to build out the, um, the holder or the anchor for the swivel for the lid itself. And we're going to be using a different shape instead of a box to create it. And then we'll talk about how to uh, shape it into exactly what we want. So I'll see you in the next lesson.